My name is Clark Mortensen. For those of you who are not familiar with beryllium, I want to give you just a brief introduction. But before I get into that, I don't want to forget to mention the sellout. I really want to put in a plug for the reading of that book. Vicki has done a tremendous job with that. If you haven't read it, uh, it's a very good read, not only for the thorium, but for the background on many of the individuals that have been here and spoken to us. I just want to really tell you, just don't take that thing home and not read it. It's a very important book. I'm sure that most, if not all, of you are familiar with beryllium in the fact that it's used in the lifter reactors. It's also used in a wide variety of other applications. Some, when it's used as a pure metal, beryllium is lighter than aluminum and stronger than steel. When it's alloyed with copper, it makes copper stronger than steel and it also tremendously increases the electrical conductivity of copper, makes it a superconductor and it makes the heat trans transferability of copper greatly increased. When it's alloyed with aluminum, it also makes aluminum about uh, six times more structural strong than it is naturally. That's why they use it in a lot of aircraft and so forth and uh, satellites in the alloy and in the uh, fighter jets. Brillium is also the only material that is listed on both the U.S. strategic and critical materials lists. Beryllium is not a rare earth, it's its own standalone element, just to clear up a little confusion that I've had some feedback on. Beryllium has been around and used quite extensively since about 1960. It was discovered in uh, Utah at that time. 85% of the world's beryllium is currently supplied by Materion, so they have quite a monopoly on that. It, up until just recently, they had 95% of the market, and all of the mining that Materion does is right there in Utah at the Spore Mountain ore deposit that's there. And the reason I'm here today, too, I want to just get right out, is I'm here looking to put someone in the beryllium business. I represent two individuals who own a large ore deposit adjacent to and can take, you know, part of the same deposit that Materion has been mining for 50 years. And so if you know anyone that might be using beryllium coming up with these reactors, or anyone else that would be interested in being in the beryllium business, we'd like to have someone talk to us about getting this beryllium deposit up and running. Now in the past, uh, this deposit has had about 15, well, about $30 million in today's dollars spent on bringing this to the development stage of building a plant. There's been a plant designed. We have a patented extraction process that allows us to produce beryllium for about half the cost that Materion does. Some of the companies that have been involved in this over the years, just to give us uh, an idea, is Anaconda, Centennial Development, Bear Dole Bear River, Bear, Bear Dole Bear Riverside, Cerns Rogers, and Hazen Research. United Engineers and con Contractors and KD Engineering. The plant is ready to be built. It's been designed and perfected. Many of you are aware of the problems that the rare earth industry has, uh, has can be attributed to the monopoly on, that China has on supply. And beryllium suffers many of the same challenges that rare earths do, namely that the reluctance of companies and designers and engineers to use beryllium because it is a sole source supply. So we feel that that's one of the reasons it would be great to have another source of beryllium supply besides the Materion monopoly that's going on. There are many new uses for beryllium that could be developed. If there was a second source, people wouldn't have the reluctance that they do in, in developing with it. China has punished and threatened companies who have spoken out against their monopoly. Beryllium was up against much the same situation, but in a much smaller market. Now, some of the differences between rare earths and the monopoly that China has, rare earths are widespread throughout the world. There's multiple sources of it. We've all heard the discussions about it here. But China was able to get the intellectual uh, property and get the development and the refinement and the downchain value-added development all focused and funneled through China so that they control that market in that way. The difficulty with beryllium is, that in 60 years since this discovery in, at Spore Mountain, there hasn't been another economical ore body of beryllium discovered in the fr free world in the last 60 years. So Materion's monopoly is simply that they control the source. And they refine that 
beryllium into beryllium oxide in Delta, Utah, and then they ship it back to Ohio where it's refined and the value added chain goes from there into the, all the alloys and the development. But they also, in the difference between there and China, they sell the beryllium oxide to multiple users throughout the world who do alloy work and the value chain adding and so forth. So their main choke point is simply at the ore body to the oxide. What we're offering is an opportunity where we have an ore body, 3,000 tons of beryllium that's been proven and uh, drilled up and proven in, re in reserve. It's about a $500 million deposit. And this could be taken through the plant design to process this beryllium would be at only about $25 million to put the plant into production that's already been designed and engineered. So at that point, someone would be able to solve the choke point that the monopoly has on it right now and putting beryllium oxide from the ore body out into the marketplace. So that's why one of the main reasons we feel this would be an advantage to someone either to go into the beryllium business, maybe someone would be interested in having this beryllium reserve in tap because having been here at the conference, I've been able to find out that the molten salt reactors are going to have a huge impact on the consumption of beryllium. Uh, it won't take very many reactors coming online to consume all of the current uh, beryllium that's being produced annually. If someone had this beryllium reserve that we have, and Brush Wellman has claimed that they, for the current usage, have hundreds of years of ore body out there, we have about half as much of the ore reserve as they have. In fact, uh, Dick Moody, one of the principals of this company, was in on the discovery of beryllium and at one time owned probably over half of the beryllium reserves that uh, Brush Wellman or Materion, as it's called now, is mining. He sold it to Anaconda, Anaconda in turn sold it to them. So we have a very viable ore reserve, and if you would like to have access to beryllium or know anyone that would, we'd appreciate you getting a hold of us and uh, any questions about beryllium or uh, about what I've talked about. Is China going to buy the beryllium? I don't think that the U.S. government would allow that because right now Materion is the sole source provider of this strategic and critical material. I, there's just no way the government would allow that. Well, I appreciate the opportunity and I'll look forward to uh, visiting with some more of you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.